For the next part of this series, we will be focusing on vocals. These are tips for laying down the best possible vocals for your song. The power is back. Now that we've written our masterpiece, it's time to actually make it. The first part of this process we will tackle is putting the words to a beat. This series is encompassing all of popular music, so this information will be useful for rappers and for singers. From my own personal experience, I found that many singers struggle with this part, with putting words to a rhythm, mostly because singers don't have to think about this. I've that come much. up with an illustration for this process. First, when you listen to a song, you have to learn how to clap out the tempo. Put on a metronome. You can actually go to Google and type in metronome and you get a free metronome right on your computer. And there are also plenty of apps that you can get for your phone to use for a metronome. Put on the tempo, clap your hand to match the tempo you put in. Once you develop somewhat of an internal clock and you can clap your hands evenly without the metronome on, you can just clap your hands without the metronome to feel the beat for this next part. So very quick info about this, I mentioned a term BPM. BPM is beats per minute. When you enter the BPM into a metronome, it will create that number of evenly spaced clicks over the course of one minute. The next point to understand is beats and bars. Each time you hear a metronome click, or each time you clap your hands to the beat of the song, that is one beat. A bar, or also more properly called in music, a measure, that is a group of beats. So for the most part, in popular music that we Americans are listening to, there are four beats in each bar. So every time you clap and you count to four, you start over and count to four again, you start over and count to four again, and you keep that going. There's other numbers of beats that can be in a bar too, Sometimes you might hear three beats in a bar. Usually we hear that in ballads in our music, but there's other times you can hear that too. And sometimes the number of beats per bar can change over the course of the song. For the scope and experience level that this is intended for, we're not gonna cover that, but just know that that's a thing. So that way if you're clapping to some of your favorite songs and you wonder why counting to four claps and starting over, doesn't line up, that's why. For the purposes of keeping it simple, we are going in groups of four for my example. My illustration here is the idea of each beat being a bucket. Each one of these buckets can fit so many blocks. These blocks come in different sizes that make up a predetermined portion of the beat. I have blocks that take up the whole bucket. I have blocks that take up half of the bucket. I have blocks that take up a third of the bucket. Finally, I have blocks that take up a quarter of the bucket. Before we get the words involved, I'm going to show you how this works with my wood blocks. All right, so like I said, first we have to pick a tempo. Let's pick a real easy tempo, 60 beats per minute. Why 60? Because there's 60 seconds in a minute. So you'll have one click per second. So now with these blocks here, the way that this would work, when we're learning how to make our rhythms here, and this is keeping it very simple. We're not gonna get into what each of these values is called at all or anything like that. Each one of these blocks takes up a certain part of the beat. So each one of these buckets, when this ticks, one of these buckets goes by. So right now we have four blocks. One block takes up all of each bucket. So one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Get the idea? Now, let's change one of these blocks. Let's take beat number two out. Instead of having a block that takes up the entire bucket here, let's use these. These blocks that only take up half of the bucket. So now, we need two things to happen in, the, in the evenly spaced in the course of that bucket. So we go one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Still following me? Still getting the idea? So now you can get advanced. Sometimes you have things that take up a third of the bucket. 
I think a lot of people know the term triplets. That's what that's called musically. That's the Migos flow. It's actually going to be quite tricky to go from doing uh, just two to doing three. That's one of the trickiest things to do in music. Well, let's try it. Ready? Um, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Get it? Now, we have the shortest of these blocks, at least that we're going to talk about. Where there's four that can fit inside of one bucket. So you have four evenly spaced things happening in that one click. It'd be nice if we didn't get phone calls in the middle of videos. So, ready? One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. So you already notice I've kind of been doing it. You can mix these up. So you can actually even combine these buckets. So say what you want to do is you want to take these out where there's four. You want to put in one block that takes up half of the bucket. And then just have two extra. It would go like something like this. One, two, ready, go. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Get it? Kind of fun. I'm making sure I go slow because I've been doing this for a long time. So to me, this makes sense. But with some of you, it might still be a little confusing. I mean, it's obvious to me, but not to everybody. So that's how this works. So basically, when you're coming up with a rhythm, you guys can use this block system and think of this in your head. You can take these blocks that are a duration of time, because that's the best way to think of rhythm. It's a durations of time. Put them in each of these four buckets, and as you're counting, this is how many things happen inside that one bucket, or that one click of the metronome, or that one clap. So now that we've talked a little bit about how this bucket system works, let's get the words involved. So, we have our masterpiece here. This is my one bar worth of lyrics. So, the idea here is we want to take these words, break them down into each syllable. These syllables, once we break them down, will correspond to a block. So let's do that to make it make sense. We know we have I, and if, if we don't know what syllables are, I don't know what to tell you. We have I, Love, Rai, Ting, Mu, Zik. I love writing music. That's how many syllables that this makes up. So now, let us go back to our blocks and come up with some different ways that we can arrange these six syllables into a beat. So before we put the metronome back on, we have six syllables in that line there. So we need six of these in some combination that can take that up. So let's say we want to do one full beat and we're going to put I there. Let's say we want to go love is half. We can put two of these here that take up a quarter. This one sixteenth on the other side. That's a technical term, but we're going to cover that in a future video. Writing. Mu. Sick. So, we have these spaced out lyrics put to these blocks, put to the beats. So let's bring the metronome back into this. We're gonna stick with 60 beats per minute. First, before we even say the words, let's just remember what would this sound like without the words. So we have one note taking up for the first beat, one note taking up half of the second beat, two notes each taking up one quarter of the second beat, one note taking up the whole third beat, one note taking up the whole fourth beat. So we're gonna go 
See? Understand that? Let's hear it again, how that would sound. Get it? So how would this go? It would go, I love writing new sick. I love writing new sick. I love writing new sick. That's one way to do it. Let's play around though. So now, why don't we try getting a little bit more creative? It's a couple of things I'd like to point out. For one thing, a syllable can last for more than just one block. It can also last for more than just one bucket. And also some of these blocks, you don't have to put a word over. You can make it a block of silence. So let's see if we can come up with a rhythm like that. Actually, let's do this. Let's go. Half of the beat. Half of the beat. And we're going to go. I love. I'm going to introduce something new here. This is called a tie. So what happens is you put this here. Love now takes up the time of this block and this block and your bar. So now we have four more things over here to go. So I'm gonna put two of these blocks that takes up one quarter of the beat over here. I'm gonna make this right thing. We're gonna go one that takes up half of the beat, mu, sick. So now this one is a good one. So let's put our metronome on. Before we try doing the words, let's just hear how it would sound with the wood blocks. One, two, three, four. 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 You notice how what I got here, I didn't hit the wood blocks? Because this block right here is tied to this one. So if we were to sing this, it would be I love writing music. I love writing music. So that would be how this rhythm would go. So let's do one more, or we could use our favorite thing the triplet flow. So what we're going to do is, we're going to bring back our friends the ties again. All of this is going to all be just me singing I. Okay, so that's going to be a long I. We're going to bring in our friends the triplets. Shout out to the Migos. We're going to go love writing. Then we're going to go music. So let's bring back our friend Mr. Metronome. And we're going to listen to how this sounds. One, two, three, right? One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. So this time I'm going to show you what it's like if we clap this rhythm out. So I love writing music. I love writing music. So now, if we were to sing it like this, we could put a melody to it, something like this. I love writing music. I love writing music. So that would be an example of how we could do this. Now, there's a myriad of different ways that we could rearrange these. There's a lot of different fun and funky things that we can do but we're gonna leave it here for a start so i hope that you guys like this little visual representation i came up of it's the most important thing that i like to drill into people who are learning music rhythm is durations that's the best way to think of it every time you clap your hands one of these buckets is passing by and inside of each of these buckets, you have so many evenly spaced out notes. So 
when we're doing that super important to think of it that way so we're going to leave this video here for now so make sure you come back for part two the power is back